Hi there, my name is Layla Harris and I've been creating these samplers for quite a while now and I thought I would just do a video while I put the, my customer sampler together for her. She lives out of state and so I'll show you basically how I get the center square and however how I get everything else lined up and how I convert these stickers into more of a die cut. So I have my base 12 by 12 and the first thing I do is I take two A2 cards and I put one across the top and one across the sides. That allows me to find the, the corner of the center square. So I take my center square and I use permanent adhesive and adhere it down. And if you look, if, if I slide these cards back and forth, it doesn't really matter where they're spaced. Um, that corner is always going to be the same. It just happens to be that these are four and a quarter inches from the edge of the paper. And when I read that measurement, I realized that we could use card bases kind of as a jig. From here, I'm going to use a couple pieces of really heavy cardstock that I cut out. And this is a repositionable dot adhesive. I'm going to put a little bit more on there. There it was a little bit before. So, and it comes up real easy. And we have our rubber and remove eraser. So I'm just going to line this up here along this edge as flush as I can. This is a very heavy cover stock that I've had for ages and ages. It's not even acid free, but that doesn't matter. What matters is it's nice and heavy. And so it is something that I can actually feel. It's like a curb where you can butt up the paper. Now I can adhere this, this one and this square onto the sampler. So I will do the top middle one. For these, I encourage you to use lots of adhesive, especially if you're using Tombow, because this is gonna be hanging up. It's not gonna be in a page protector. And you want it to stick. This one needs a lot of adhesive because it is been embossed and there's less surface area that's actually coming in contact with the white paper in the back. Okay, now we have those in place. I can just move this bar down and do the next two in the bottom row. I am working to make sure that my diamond pattern is vertical and consistent. And I want these to line up the same direction. The polka dot pattern runs in a horizontal line. Now I can pull this one up and scoot it over and work on two more squares. I used to do this without any repositionable adhesive and it was kind of challenging, but it still was more helpful than eyeballing it. The two yellow squares have an embossing diagonal, which I just used our regular close to my heart embossing folder and put the squares in on the diagonal. And they're going this way and we're going to distress them in a few. Give it a little bit more depth and resolution. So. So there we have it. And toss these aside. I'll go back later and get all of the little bits of adhesive off of these with my rub and remove eraser, but I don't have it at my table. This is our sanding block, and I'm going to distress and make our white core shore show up.
Now I'm going to start up here at the top corner and work my way across the sampler. These grass pieces are a little bit bigger than what they're supposed to be because when I cut them in Cricut design space they didn't want to shorten down and so I figured it was just easier to trim them with a pair of scissors. Okay, now we have our sheet of stickers, and I need a butterfly for this top corner. And these are vellum stickers, and they are adhesive, but we want them to be raised with a little bit of 3D foam. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a bit of cornstarch and put on the adhesive portion. It's not going to show up, it's not going to show through. What it's just going to do is make the back of the sticker no longer sticky. So it sticks where we want it to go, not wherever that. Being that this is a vellum, we want it to, it can show through, so we don't really want that to happen too much, so we're going to hide our little 3D foam square. Now I just put it under the body. That. A lot of times I've done it where I've covered the whole back of the sticker with foam and that's been great but we don't want to do that tonight because they're, um, you'll see it. Let me grab the rest of my stickers. I'm going to embellish after I get everything laid out. So it takes a little bit less time I think when you embellish after you get everything put down. So there is my other ladybug. And the rest of this is just going to be some puffy embellishments. This next square has the Happy Spring or Hello Spring. And they were cut from our glitter paper. I'm going to use our Bonding Memories Dual Action Glue Pen. And we are going to let it be very blue when we put it on so it is nice and sticky. If we let it dry, it'll become repositionable. And this is a piece of home decor. We don't need it repositionable and falling down on the floor while and getting lost and trampled, trampled. So I go real quick and then I always go back to where I started to um, make sure it's still blue. So you can sort of see that it's blue right there. And spring went pretty much right through the middle here. And hello is above it. This is one of the few squares that has kind of any white space. I like to fill up my sampler squares and make them a little busy. And I also like to make each square kind of um, stand on its own. kind of tell its own story. This umbrella is going to go in the third square and I'm going to stick it right on down. It's dark enough that the pattern doesn't show through too much. And it does some. But um, we're going to cover it up with bling and that. So I've already done some of the um, cornstarch technique just to help us along tonight. I only have so much memory space on my card for my camera and my goal is to not run out of time. I also don't want to take up your time. So the second umbrella is lifted up with 3D foam. I'm going to use these smaller squares. I put my squares on fluorescent colored paper when I do workshops because that way they don't get lost when they're on the table. People know to look for a bright colored speck of paper and then they can find their little foam squares. Otherwise they just get lost in the scraps and sometimes they even get thrown away. So 
There's some other things that go on here, but I'm going to wait until we embellish it. And this square, actually, I kind of goofed up on because I was just going to um, use the tree that I had already designed. But it looks like I get to put a new one down. So there was also a, a chance to do an Easter cross in this, but my customer opted for a um, tree instead. I had 10 squares for this sampler and everybody liked all 10 of them, which made it a little bit hard because there's only places to put nine. Oh, here's my other tree. This tree is from Art Philosophy. The little leaflets are actually the football shaped leaf that's on Art Philosophy, well, and three of them welded together in various sizes. I didn't find anything exactly what I wanted, so I made something. And as I said, I'll be embellishing later, so it'll come together a little bit better in a few minutes. I like dimension. I know it's a pain to put all these little foam squares on, but we're not putting this in a scrapbook. It's not going to be too thick ever, so let's just have some fun with little squares and keep adding more and more dimension. You'll see what I mean in a minute, because I'll even get more gung-ho with squares and make two layers worth. Yeah, so there's five. Odd number is always a good way of doing things. So my next part of the sampler is going to have some clouds and to give them a little dimension I'm going to ink them with some light blue ink. I chose to use sky which is the color that retired last year. And it's pretty easy. I just use a dauber and go around the edge. And it looks really bright when you first put it on but as it dries it kind of mellows out. Now I should have looked first because I have these clouds oriented in two different directions. Oh, that one was probably supposed to be flipped over. Yep. Oh, well, let's just do them this way. Two clouds this way and one cloud the opposite. I only have to read one of them. This cloud is from the Artiste and I just cut it in three, two different sizes. So this cloud, the first one is going to go down with zero pieces of foam, and it's touching the edge and up pretty high. The second one is going to go be applied with one layer of foam. It kind of overlaps and it's going to go to the other edge. So we span the whole thing. And then the third little cloud is going to go right about here. And you can either move it up or down. I'm gonna use a smaller squares of foam. If you had the roll of 3D foam, that would be great because you only have to choose one size and you just cut it to fit. But I'm going to actually put one square up here because it's gonna go up on the one that's already raised up and down here, it's going to be two foams high so that it stays balanced and that we have clouds on top of clouds and it's not just tomboed together. That we have a little, a little bit more lift. So, like that. Now we're gonna make our kite. And it starts out as a kite that's just a white piece of paper cut on the Cricut and we have this border and we're going to make it into a kite pattern. And there's quite a few different ways you could do this, we discovered, but um, and they all look great. And yeah, the hardest part we noticed is getting this off of the carrier sheet. So it was die cut just a little too hard. 
Well, look at that. Oh, it's coming off. I'm going to take the whole thing off. And the key is to never flip it over, but okay. I'm going to line it up. And you see how it goes more than sufficiently over the edge. So now we're going to line it back up again. Like that. And make the pattern continuous. And do it again. Oh, and I always goof this up. I didn't cover it up over far enough. So actually, I think I will, I'm actually going to flip it around. We're going to make kind of an eye. Oops, see here, we'll have some white showing. So let's scoot it over down here. And make a pattern. Or let's do this. Yeah. And then we're going to turn it, and we're going to line up these little diamonds again. We're going to have a little tiki man kind of show up in our pattern here, but he's going to be totally adorable. So, I could line it up here, but it's not enough. So there. And then again, one more time. There's the pattern. Now we're not going to wrap this behind because it's not going to look good. We're just going to cut it flush when we're all done. And so I'm holding it up to the light so I can see through it. This is vellum. It's really easy to see through. So we're going to have our kite. So now we kind of have eyes and a face. It's a little different than some of the other ones we've done. Oh, look at this. I didn't quite trim it down quite enough. There we go. Now for a couple layers of foam. And I'm going to stick down the top part, but not quite ready for the bottom. So on this project we also have a butterfly and a kite tail. So let's work on the kite tail. Especially since I don't even know where the butterfly is. Okay. This is one of our um, twist ties that are in slate. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap it around my pencil or my piercing tool. I like the fat ones because it gives it a little bit better curl than if I did it around a little skinny pen or a pencil. So pull it off. It's okay if it uncurls. You could use the whole piece. I am just choosing to use about half of it. And now I'm going to figure out where it lays best. And I'm going to anchor part of it underneath the foam square that I had here. And I have a little bit too much sticking out. There. I pulled on it so it uncurled a little. And there we go. Now I have a little glue dot. And these are sheets of glue dots. They're really great for workshops, but we sell them by the roll. 